I'm too thankful for the opportunity to come to be in God's house once again. Amen. I was thinking as Brother Elijah was singing of a story, a preacher friend of mine shared once. He said that one of his children was was in their room and was frustrated. And he walked in there to find out what was going on. And his child said, Dad, it's not working. It's not working. And he said, what isn't working? And they held up a colored crayon. Amen. And looked at the, the crayon that they had. It was a white crayon. And they were coloring away on the page. said, Dad, it's not working. It's not working. Amen. He had to show them it's working. Amen. Even when you can't see it, even when it doesn't look like it's working, it's working. Amen. Aren't you thankful? Amen. That that this is old time religion, the word of God, the power of God, it works. Amen. Sometimes we may not see it in that moment. It may not be doing what we think it ought to be doing, but how many know it's working? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So good to be back in the house of the Lord. My wife thanks you for the update of the picture. Amen. Amen. I, I was uh, uh, last night on the way home. She said, "Look, uh, she sent she she showed me two pictures on the phone." She said, "Do you have these on your phone?" I said, "I don't know." She sent them to me. She said, "You do now." She said, "In the future, if somebody wants a picture, send her." I don't like that picture myself. My hair is not right in that picture. Amen. But it'll do. Amen. Praise the name of God. Amen. Appreciate each and every one coming. I understand that it's a sacrifice to come. Amen. And and, and to take time out of a, out of a, out of a busy season. Amen. But I, I I believe that God's going to bless us and God's going to help us. And I'm looking forward to what God has in store. Uh, I tell you, we we enjoyed His presence last night. Amen. Just been rejoicing in that today. And I came tonight expecting God to move once again. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Second Corinthians chapter number 2. Second Corinthians chapter number 2, going to read uh, be, uh, verse number 11, one verse of Scripture. Verse number 11, praise the name of the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter number 2, verse number 11. How many knows that the enemy is working overtime in these days? Amen. It's, it's obvious that he has increased his attack. Of course, we understand the Bible said that would happen. Amen. He said that he would have great wrath when he knew his time was running out. Amen. I believe, amen, we are in that day. Amen. But that just means we got to pray harder. That just means we need to give it all we've got. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11, reads like this. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. One more time. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. You can be seated. Pray God bless his holy word this evening. I want to preach as God would allow me on this thought, a bag of tricks, a bucket of excuses, and a pack of lies. Praise the name of the Lord. We're finding in our text Paul writing uh, to the church, uh, and, and he's expressing Satan's desire to get any kind of advantage uh, that he can. Uh, he is constantly examining our lives. Uh, amen. He's examining the church to see, uh, is there an area I can exploit? Uh, is there a weakness uh, that I can manipulate? Uh, is there something I can use to get uh, an advantage? Uh, I looked up the, the this afternoon uh, what it means to take somebody said they're taking advantage of this or taking advantage of that. Uh, I looked up that word. It means to exploit uh, for one's own benefit. Uh, how many know Satan wants to take advantage uh, of you and I? Uh, and friend, I can assure you uh, anything he finds, if you quit praying, uh, he'll take advantage of that. 
If you quit coming to the house of God faithfully, he'll take advantage of that. Amen. If you quit getting in and seeking God, he'll take advantage of anything that he can find. But Paul says we're aware of what he's trying to do. Paul said we're aware of what he tries to use against us. Amen. If we were ignorant to what his attempts are, if we were ignorant to what his agenda is, then he would very much have the advantage. But because we know what he's up to, we know what kind of games he plays, we know what kind of tricks he tries to pull, then friend, we can eliminate the advantage of the enemy. Amen. In case you didn't know what some of Satan's devices, that word devices, literally in Strong's, it means a purpose or a thought. It means a technique. It means a plan or a scheme. Amen. Satan's got a bag full of tricks. Amen. That's the first thing. Amen. What's he got? First of all, one of his devices. He's got a bag of tricks. Hey, Amen. Anybody else ever grow up on Looney Tunes? The Bible said, beware of the wiles of the devil. Amen. I wish Christians were a little more like Wiley Coyote. Amen. He never did get tired, did he? Hey, man, this didn't work. He'd try something else. If that didn't work, he'd try something else. Oh, I wish we was that determined in the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But Satan has a bag of tricks. Amen. He's got a bag of tricks that he tries to pull on the people of God. I got to thinking about it this afternoon at how many folks throughout scripture have fallen for a trick of the devil. Amen. I look at Samson, how great and how strong he was, yet he fell for a trick of the devil. Amen. And I realize it doesn't matter how strong that you think think you are. Amen. The devil still can trick you. I thought about David, how spiritual that he was. Amen. What a a great psalmist and worshiper. Yet he fell for a trick of the devil. And I thought it doesn't matter how spiritual you might be right now. You've still got to watch out for a trick of the devil. I thought about Solomon and how wise he was. But yet we find that Satan had a trick up his sleeve and I thought it doesn't matter how smart you think you are you've still got to be aware that there's a devil that's got a bag full of tricks amen he tried amen that bag of tricks on Jesus amen found him in the wilderness he pulled out the first trick doubt If you're the son of God, if you're who you say you are, if you're really that, Oh, is he ever trying to pull that trick on you? Trying to get you to doubt, trying to get you to question one of the oldest tricks in the bag. Amen. The trick he used on Eve. Amen. Tried to get her to doubt God's word, to get her to doubt God's goodness. Amen. Here he is trying to get Jesus pull that trick out. Amen. But Jesus used the word of God. Amen. To combat that trick of the devil. Amen. He said, it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So the devil said, well, that trick didn't work. Let me try another trick. Amen. So what does he do? He says, well, let's go to church. Amen. He says he took him up to the pinnacle of the temple. So why don't you just bail out? Because he said now, he said he'd give his angels charge over you. Amen. That they would bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. Second trick he tried was distortion. Amen. To take the word of God and use it in a distorted manner. Oh, I feel like to tell somebody, you got to be careful what you listen to. You got to be careful what, amen, who, oh, dear God, help me. There are those out there that'll distort, that'll twist, that'll change. Amen, there's, oh, God, help me. You know what the most dangerous deception is? 
Hey, hey amen, Brother Justin's a banker. I'm glad he's here tonight. Hey amen. Ever dealt with counterfeit money? Oh, yeah, he said. Anybody ever try to pass off monopoly money as real money for you? Amen. Anybody know, amen, a pink $10 bill or whatever, monopoly money, amen, that ain't gonna fool nobody. But what they do is they try to get something that looks so close. And I tell you, the devil will try to distort it. He'll try to make it look so right. Amen. He'll use the word of God again. Friend, it's a trick of the devil. That's why we gotta be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Well, that didn't work either. So he said, well, I'm gonna try another trick. And he showed him all the kingdoms of this world. What was he pulling out this time? A distraction. Well, look at this. Look at that. Look at all of this right here. Oh, dear God, if there is one trick that the enemy is using in these last days, it is distraction. Oh, dear God, help me. I didn't pass my phone off to my wife. Amen. If there's one thing seems like this becomes such a distraction. Oh, dear God, it's a little device that we carry around. Amen. It distracts us from praying. It distracts us from worse. Dear God, amen. If you're not careful, the enemy will get you distracted in the house. Of God. Well, look at so and so. Look what they're doing. Look how they're living. <laughs> Distractions. Distractions. It's nothing but a trick of the devil. Oh, I feel like going on. Amen. Amen. He's got a bag of tricks. Oh, but that ain't all. He's got a bucket full of excuses. I can promise you as a pastor, I've, well, I go say I heard them all because I'm sure some I come up with something, something. But I've heard a bunch. Oh, God. Hey, man, I was, I was uh, uh, coming home from Walmart one time on a Wednesday night. Not here. Amen. There's another church I pastor coming home from Walmart on a Wednesday night and passed one of my church members. I was coming from Walmart. They were headed towards Walmart. Passed him on the road. Waved at him even, but it was obvious they didn't see me. How do you know? Because they missed church that night. And I called him. I said, hey, sister, I just wanted to check on you. I mean, really, I saw him that day, so it kind of shocked me that they weren't there. I just wanted to check on you and make sure you're all right. Oh, preacher, I've been in bed all day long. Did you call him out on it? I didn't feel I had to. I figured they'll, get, they'll answer for it one day. I'm talking about a bucket full of excuses. Amen. The devil. Hallelujah. Let me read my scripture first. Hope I don't mess up the manger scene. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, notice what he said. He said, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servant at supper time to say to them which are bidden, come for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent begin to make excuse. Amen, the devil, every time it comes church time, he'll reach into that bucket and pull out some excuses. Well, you're too busy. Here, you ain't got to go tonight. There's your pass. You're busy. Amen, Brother Lodge, you're too tired. Here, you ain't got to go. There's you an excuse. Amen, sister, you really don't feel good, do you? Here you go. Amen, you just stay home. That's all right. Hallelujah. What's he doing? He's coming up with excuse. Amen, if you do ignore the excuse, amen, you get to the house of God and the Spirit starts to move it, he'll say, don't you get in. Don't you participate. Why? Amen, well, why didn't you worship? Here's what I've heard. Well, I didn't feel nothing. 
Show me one scripture that says you got to feel a glory streak, that says you got to feel a goose pup, that says you got to feel a chill in order to praise the Lord. We read it last night. We praise him according to his excellent greatness, not according to what I feel or don't feel. Why don't you get in? Here you go. Here's your good excuse. Too young. Amen. Well, why don't you get in? Well, here's your excuse. Too old. He's picking on all them about driving the senior bus. I give that to him. Y'all can thank me later. Excuses. Excuses. Amen. He's got a bucket full of them. Amen. Why didn't you worship God? Why didn't you obey God? Amen. Well, I got looking around and nobody else was. Amen. Why didn't you participate in the service? Why didn't you step out? Well, I was afraid I'd be in the flesh. Or I was afraid, you know what? Somebody might think about me. Somebody might say, I was crazy. Friend, if you're looking for an excuse not to worship, if you're looking for an excuse not to pray, he has got a bucket full of them. What we need to do is say, hey, I'm not looking for a reason not to get in. I'm not looking for an excuse not to worship. I came to worship. I came to give my all. I came to glorify. I'm going to throw in I'm going to slide in a tidbit of a whole nother message amen that I preached before the woman with the issue of blood could have easily sat home with an excuse and said I can't reach out and touch him because I'm bleeding I can't reach out and touch him because I can't touch anybody out they'll be unclean but instead amen instead of it being an excuse it became a reason hallelujah amen well you don't feel good that's a reason that's not an excuse not to. That's a reason to reach out. Well, I don't feel nothing. That's not an excuse not to. That's a reason to get in. Because I want to feel something. I want to touch God. It can either be an excuse or a reason. Uh, woo! Hallelujah. He's got a bag of tricks. He's got a bucket full of excuses. Amen. How many knows he's got a pack of lies? (laughs) The Bible said when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar. And the father of it. I, I had a cousin growing up. Amen. He's, he's gone on to glory now. Uh, but but, but go, growing up, he was, he was a lot older than us. I hope he prayed through about it. I put him in glory a second ago, but I hope he prayed through. Was that juggle was bad to lie. I watched him. This wasn't a hearsay. I watched him myself. We we was out playing basketball at the church, and he had a curfew that was before ours. Amen. I I watched him go to his car, brother, roll all his windows down, put his keys in the seat, lock the door, and then go call his mom and daddy and say, I'm going to be late because my keys are locked in the car. Maybe I shouldn't have said that gives some of y'all an idea. Hey, Amen. You ever heard of beware of half truths? You might get the wrong half. <laughs> He'd tell us stuff. I mean, most outlandish stories in the world. And then I'd go home to mom and daddy and I'd say, Did you hear? Did, did you know this? And I'd tell them that. They'd say, That never happened. That's not the truth. I'd go home and fact check him. 
Amen. I come to find out. Amen. I'll pray through about it later. But at least in his younger days, I come to find out you couldn't believe anything he said. I caught him in so many lies, you couldn't believe nothing. He'd have made a good politician, wouldn't he? Amen. How many lies has the devil been called in, yet we still haggle over everything he says? He tells us something, and we whine and cry and bellyache about it. <laughs> My family eventually got to the point where they understood but what I was going to say before I said it. Amen. I'd see him, he'd be saying, uh, they'd be talking to me and say, uh, the devil's been telling me this and the devil's been telling me that. He got to the place I only had to ask one question. Who told you? Who told you? He'd say, I know what you're going to say. He's a liar. Woo, hallelujah. What with the devil? There's lies that the devil still tries to tell. Amen, God's people. I'm just going to pull them all out so I ain't got to quit fiddling with them. Hallelujah. Amen. First of all, amen, he likes to tell, amen, that there is no hope. Have you ever had the devil tell you there's no hope? Might as well quit praying. Brother Wyatt, there's no hope. Might as well give up. Might as well just throw in the towel. Hallelujah. He'll tell the sinner there's no hope for you. He'll tell the backslider there's no hope for you. Amen. It's a lie of the devil. Amen. He'll tell you there's no hope. He'll tell you, hey man, there's no help. Many there be who would say, my soul is no help for him and God. You're beyond help. Hey man, ain't no sense in praying about it anymore. Ain't no sense in going up there. Amen, the devil loves to tell. Amen, tries to convince folks. Amen, you might as well just quit praying about it, give up on it, because there's just no help. Amen, you ain't gonna find help in the church. You ain't gonna find help in the order. Amen, because there is no help. I'm here to tell somebody there's still help. He said that we could come boldly unto the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I've got news for the devil. God is our very present help in trouble. devil tell you oh here's one he tells you there's no harm that was one of his first lies eat that for ain't ain't nothing wrong with that no harm in doing that amen how many young people I started on a wrong trail amen got in deeper than he ever thought they would because somewhere along the way the devil sold them a lie ain't no harm hey Ain't, ain't no harm in that. Amen. Amen. Brother, brother Warren, ain't no harm. Amen. I, I know you've been taught that. And I, I know I know your parents instilled that in you. Oh, but they're just trying to control your life. They ain't just trying to uh, be bossy. Amen. They just don't want you to have no fun. But there ain't no harm in that. My Lord, it's a lie of the devil. Oh, that's what I feel. I felt in my office today. Amen. Last night he tells you there's no hurry. Got plenty of time, brother. Amen. Ain't got to pray tonight. Ain't got to get in tonight. Ain't got to pray through now. Ain't got to apologize today. Ain't got to make things right with them this service. Amen. Ain't no hurry. We got plenty of time. I was in a youth camp last year. Amen. I know I wasn't in. They, they split up. Uh, this particular youth camp, they split up boys and girls. Sister Crawley taught one of the one of the services there, one of the morning devotions, and she talked to them about time running out. 
And this young girl, amen, she started talking. She said, I, I hear all of y'all. She said, but I don't want Jesus to come right now. She said, I, I want to get married and I want to have children and I want all of this and I want to do this and do that and the other. Amen, what she's saying. Amen, I, I don't got time right now. Amen, I want to have more time. Amen, the devil convinced young people, there's no hurry. Go ahead and explore. Go ahead and go out there. Dibble and dabble in all of this. You got time to pray through. You got time to come back. You got time to make things I'm not trying to change this into a into a funeral service, but I've preached funerals for 18-year-olds and 20-year-olds who thought they had plenty of time. And I tell you, friend, time is running out. Amen. This thing's winding up. We're near to the coming of the Lord than we've ever been. If you've been waiting on the right time to get in, you found it right now. If you've been waiting on the right time to pray through, it's tonight. He said, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. We're running out of time. Stand with me all over the house. I can promise you I question God. Really searched myself. Amen. After starting off last night about being stirred and getting in to follow that up. Amen. With devices of the enemy. Amen. I even felt like God, maybe I should have went that the other way. Amen. But I felt God, and I tried to get away from it, but I felt God deal with me. And tonight, I needed to warn somebody about Satan's devices. What he's wanting to do is take advantage of us. Yeah. That's why... That's why he pulls out that bag of tricks. That's why he gives us those excuses. That's why he feeds us that pack of lies. He's trying to take advantage of us. Amen. He's still, his motive, his agenda has not changed. He still wants to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I feel like God's telling somebody tonight, I've come that you might have life. Amen. I feel led to give the altar call this way while heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Amen. There's somebody here, the enemy. Amen. Has been, amen. He's been using these devices on you. He's been using, amen, doubt. He's been using uh, distractions. He's been distorting uh, things in your life. Been trying to make you convince yourself of something that's not true and it's not real. I really felt God speaking to somebody tonight. Amen. When I talked about that lie that said there's no harm. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Everybody else is doing it. Everybody else my age involved in it. Oh, if I could take you to some folks right now. Amen. They tell you, oh, don't mess with it. There is harm. Amen. He's convinced somebody there's no hurry. Wait till you're older. Amen. Right now, do as you want. Wait till you're older. There's there's no hurry. You ain't got to get in now. I'm urging somebody. Don't wait. Come on. Come don't on. wait. Don't put it off. Go ahead and sell out tonight. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is dealing with your heart right now. Would you come? Would you come? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If the enemy's told you there's no hope, come on. Come on, come on. If he's told you there's no help for you, there's no help for your family, there's no help for your marriage, there's no help for your children, why don't you just bring that lie to the altar? Do like the king did, spread it out on the altar. Say, God, here's what the enemy said. But God, what do you say about it? Come on, saints of God. Let's pray. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, young folks. Let's get this order tonight. That devil wants to steal. 
Amen. He wants to kill. He wants to destroy. But God wants to help you tonight. Hallelujah. You don't have to be the victim. You can be the victor. You don't have to be overcome by the enemy. You can be the overcomer. Hallelujah. <laughs> 